Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of June 2021. For this month, we are going to review cost accounting in SAP Business One. It is a great way to keep track of your costs and revenues for specific business activities, departments, etc. The cost accounting feature within SAP Business One allows you to create various sets of cost centers and distribution rules. You can easily see reports that break down how the costs and revenues are broken up for each business process that is assigned to a distribution rule. Let's begin by navigating to Financials, Cost Accounting, Dimensions, to review dimensions and how to create them. Creating dimensions in SAP Business One provides additional depth to cost accounting within your system. Once you create each dimension, you will be able to assign a cost center and distribution rule to each of the following dimensions. The Dimensions window will only appear after you have the Use Multi-Dimensions checkbox checked on the Cost Accounting tab of the General Settings window. As a note, you can only create five dimensions in the system. The Name field corresponds to the default name of the dimension. The Active column, when checked, will indicate that the dimension is active. Once the dimension has cost centers or distribution rules assigned to it, you will not be able to uncheck the active checkbox. Finally, the description field is where you can change the name of the dimension to something that better suits the actual purpose of the dimension. Now let's move on to the cost centers feature under the cost accounting section. An example of a cost center is a company unit or division that performs a specific function of the business such as manufacturing specific products or providing specific services. The cost centers that are defined in this window represent the division or department and are used to consolidate the expenses and revenues resulting from the ongoing activity of the specified department. Let's go over how to set up cost centers in your system. The cost center field is where you can enter in a code for the cost center you are creating and in the name field is where you can enter in the name of your cost center. In the Owner field is where you can assign an employee as the owner of the cost center. If you want to break a cost center down even further, you can assign a sort code to the cost center. So for example, if you have different product lines, you can assign a sort code to each product line to differentiate between them. Dimension is where you can select which dimension the cost center belongs to. Note. This field will only appear when the Use Multi-Dimension checkbox is checked on the Cost Accounting tab of the General Settings window. If you want to view all the cost centers for a specific type, you have the ability to assign a cost center type to your cost centers. In the Effective From and To Date fields, you can enter in a date range that the cost centers will be active. The Active checkbox will determine if the cost center is active in the system or not. Finally. The Open Table button will provide you with an overview of all the cost centers and distribution rules defined within your system. Please note that when cost centers are created, the system automatically adds a direct distribution rule, which is a 100% allocation to that specific cost center. Before we review the table of cost centers and distribution rules, let's demonstrate how to set up distribution rules in the system. A distribution rule is where you determine how the cost is broken up between cost centers for a dimension. The code and description field are where you can specify the specific code and description for your distribution rule. In the effective from and to fields are where you can enter in dates that the distribution rule will be active. Moving on to the dimension field, this is where you can select which dimension the distribution rule will apply to. The active checkbox will indicate if the distribution rule will be active and available for current use in the system. The total field is where you can specify the total amount that will be used as reference for the cost center values. Next, the direct allocation checkbox is where you can indicate if the transactions posted against this distribution rule will be allocated either directly or indirectly. In general, direct allocation distribution rules are used for allocating amounts that are directly related to specific cost centers, such as raw material expenses for a production division. The next checkbox is the Allocate by Fixed Amounts checkbox. 
Selecting this checkbox will indicate that fixed amounts will be allocated to cost centers when the current distribution rule is used. Note, once this distribution rule is added, this checkbox cannot be checked afterwards. Moving on to the main table portion of the window is where you can assign the percentages or fixed amounts to various cost centers. The cost center field is where you can select the cost centers you want to specify values for. The center name column will display the name of the cost center that was selected. Next, in the value column is where you can enter in the percentage that will be used to calculate the costs and revenues of the specific cost centers for this distribution rule. If the Allocate by Fixed Amounts checkbox is checked, then you will enter in the fixed amounts in the value column instead of percentages. Below the table is a Center Z General Center field. If the percentages entered do not equal the total that was previously specified, or if there is a difference from the fixed amounts, then the remaining costs will be assigned to the Center Z Cost Center. The Table Total field will display the total amount of the values that were entered in the value column. If you need to make an adjusting entry for the specific distribution rule, you can select the Cost Accounting Adjustment button at the bottom to create an adjusting journal entry. Finally, the Distribution Rule History button will display the Distribution Rule History window, which will provide an overview of the changes made to the distribution rule based on different effective periods. Now let's go back to the Table of Cost Centers and Distribution Rules under the Cost Accounting section. On this screen, you will be able to choose from each different dimension to view how the costs are distributed for each cost center. In the Distribution Rule slash Cost Center field will be all the distribution rules that are related to the specific dimension. The Fixed Amount Allocation column will indicate if the distribution rule contains fixed amounts. You will be able to view the distribution rules effective from and to date fields in the corresponding fields. The total column corresponds to the total amount that was manually entered on the distribution rule. Next, the center Z column will display any leftover percentage that was not applied to any of the cost centers. The remaining columns will display each cost center for the specific dimension and will display either the percentage or fixed amount that was assigned to the cost center. If you would like to add either a new cost center or distribution rule to the selected dimension, you have the ability to do so by selecting either of the corresponding buttons. On the Chart of Accounts screen, you have the ability to indicate which revenue and expense accounts are linked to the distribution rules. For this example, let's select an expense account. Once you select an expense account, towards the bottom left of the window will be where you can assign a distribution rule to the account. If you have multiple dimensions created, check the dimension you want to use and then select from the lookup the distribution rule you want to assign to the GL account. This will automatically assign the distribution rule when the GL account is used in a transaction. Now let's go over how cost accounting affects a transaction in SAP Business One. On the sales or purchasing document, make sure that you have your cost accounting dimension fields visible on your document. If you do not see them, then you will need to check the form settings for the corresponding marketing document. For this example, we will create an AP invoice for the electric bill. Once we enter in the electricity GL account, the distribution rule that was assigned to the GL account will automatically populate on the document. Make sure that the correct information has been entered and add the document. There are several reports within SAP Business One that display how the costs are broken up between cost centers and distribution rules for each cost accounting transaction. The first report we will review is the Cost Center Report. This report provides information about how expenses and revenues transact against the cost centers. In the Cost Center Report Selection Criteria window is where you can select which dimension you want to view the report for. If you created any cost center hierarchy templates, you can select them in the template field. You have the ability to further refine the results by the cost center, sort code, due date, posting date, or document date range. In the Summary of field, you have the ability to display the information by distribution rules, link GL accounts, or months. If you want to view the results for a specific project, 
You can select the project checkbox and select the specific project from the lookup box. The summary by sort code checkbox, when checked, will include a summary of the sort code selected as well. This checkbox will only appear when the cost center's radio button is selected. If you do not want any closing entries to appear in the report, you can check the Exclude Closing Balances Journal Entries checkbox. The Hide Cost Centers with No Postings checkbox will hide any cost centers that do not contain any transactions. Finally, the Hide Distribution Rules with No Posting checkbox will hide any distribution rules with no transactions and this checkbox will only appear when the Summary of option is set to Distribution Rules. Once you select OK, it will display the cost center report pertaining to the selection criteria. Under the cost center column will be the cost center and depending on your selection criteria will be either the distribution rule, GL account, or months. The rest of the report is broken up between the direct and indirect allocation amounts as well as the total amount. The expenses and revenues will be separated under the direct and indirect allocation columns while the total column will include the combined total of all the columns. Now let's take a look at the distribution report. In the selection criteria window, you can select which dimension you want to view the report for if you are using multi-dimensions. If you want to narrow the report down to a specific group of distribution rules, you can specify the range of distribution rules in the distribution rule from and to fields. You also have the ability to narrow the report down by a range of dates for the posting date, due date, and document date in the corresponding fields. You can select the Project Lookup button to view the report for various projects. If you have any budget scenarios set up in your system, you can select a scenario from the dropdown. Under the Display and Report section, you have the ability to display the report in either the local currency, system currency, or both. Next, the Hide Cost Centers with No Value checkbox will hide any cost centers that do not contain any transactions posted against it for the corresponding selection criteria. Moving on to the Exclude Closing Balances Journal Entries option, it will hide any journal entries that were created with the period and closing utility. Once you select OK, the distribution report will display the information pertaining to the selection criteria you entered. The distribution rule code and description columns will display the code and description of the distribution rule respectively. Next, the GL account field will display the GL accounts that were transacted against the distribution rule. The transaction number field will display the journal entry number of the entry that was linked to the transaction containing the distribution rule. The origin column will display the type of transaction that occurred. Moving on to the Remarks column, it will contain the remarks from the journal entry that was created. If the transaction was assigned to a specific project, the project would appear in the Project column. The Total Cost column will display the total revenues and expenses that were posted against the transaction. If any revenues were posted, then the amount in the total cost will be negative. The Distribution Total column will display the total distribution amount that was transacted against the transaction. Next, the budget column will display the budget amount that was defined for the GL account and distribution rule. In relation to that column, the total cost versus budget column is calculated by taking the total cost minus the budgeted amount. Under the cost center section will be all the cost centers with their corresponding amounts for the transaction. Finally, if you need to make any adjustments to the distribution rule, you can highlight the distribution rule code field so that you can select the cost accounting adjustment button to create an adjusting entry. The cost accounting summary report will display accounting information related to each different cost center. In the selection criteria window, just like with the other reports, you can select a specific dimension or view the results for a specific template or cost center by selecting any of the corresponding options. You also have the ability to narrow the results down by the cost center type or sort code. In the date field, you can specify a date range for either the posting date, due date, or document date. Two new options in the selection criteria window 
are the GL accounts and add journal voucher checkboxes. If you select the lookup box next to the GL account checkbox, you can display the results for specific GL accounts. The add journal vouchers checkbox, when checked, will add any journal vouchers that are linked to a distribution rule to the report. Just like with the other reports, you can select either the exclude closing balances or project checkboxes. You also have the ability to view the report annually, quarterly, or monthly by selecting the corresponding radio button. Furthermore, you can display either the local currency, system currency, or both by selecting an option under the display in report section. Once you update the selection criteria window, you can click OK. When the cost accounting summary report opens, you will notice that several of the fields are the same as the other reports. The cost center, GL account, transaction number, origin, and remarks columns all contain the same type of information as the previous reports. The amount column will display the total amount that was transacted against the GL account for the transaction. The distribution rule code, description, and project fields also contain the same values as the previous reports. Finally, the cost total column will display the cost that was allocated to the cost center, which is calculated based on the transaction amount and distribution rule. This month's tip of the day is great for making sure you have all the modules you need in SAP Business One. Sometimes you need to get to a certain module in SAP, but you cannot seem to find it in your main menu. If that happens to be the case, navigate to your main menu's form settings and make sure that the option you need is checked. If you would like to reduce the amount of options in your main menu, you can simply uncheck the options you never use. You also have the ability to add or remove all the options you have authorizations to by selecting the Apply Authorizations button at the bottom. Cost accounting in SAP Business One can provide additional methods to break down your company's costs and revenues in your system. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.